Hello, this is Matt from Tracy and Matt.co.uk and from Unboxings.com. Here I am looking at the Samsung Galaxy Apollo i5801. This is obviously, as you can see, the orange branded version, but there are SIM free versions available. But we're going to take a look inside and have a quick look at the handset. So, moving the box out of the way, we have a charger, which is a standard micro USB style charger with a UK 3 pin plug. We also have a series of manuals in here, which empty out. And on top we have a 1 gig micro SD memory card and a micro SD adapter, so an SD to micro SD adapter, pretty useful. There is the user manual, which is fairly lightweight reading, uh, a few, fair few pages but it's just printed in effectively black and white and a getting started guide or the look at this a second guide I have a wired headset which has 4 pole 3.5mm jack on one end a length of cable the inline microphone with a push button and then all tangled up we have the headphones. Now these are a fairly standard thing that Samsung have been providing with their handsets for a while. And they are quite good quality headphones. They are good in their in their style, sort of uh, noise isolation um, headphones and they do quite a good job. I've used these with another Samsung device and I think they are among the best um, headphones supplied with a new handset, so pretty good. There's also a standard USB to micro USB sync and charge cable. Uh, again, I've mentioned this before. I like it when you get a charger with a captive cable as well as a USB sync charge cable. It just gives you a bit more flexibility. You can use one with your computer and then one just to charge. Handset itself is just here. And I'll just pull the battery out as well. battery. It's quite large. It's uh, listed capacity. It isn't listed. It looks like around, oh it is a 1500 milliamp hour battery. So quite a good capacity. Let's peel the covers off the back so we can actually see what we're doing and also off the front. So we can see the display. So, quite an attractive uh, silver looking design, similar to some of the other Galaxy handsets that we've uh, seen sort of, of late. So, let's start on the front. First of all, we have a 3.2 inch display, which is 240 by 400 pixels. It's a bit more of an unusual resolution for an Android uh, powered handset. There aren't too many with that resolution, they all tend to be sort of QVGA, uh, WVGA, or the 360 by 640, so, slightly more, so it is a slightly more unusual resolution. Below that, we have a couple of touch sensitive buttons. So we've got a menu and a back button, and then we have a push button in the centre, which uh, looks like it's a D-pad, but it isn't, it's just a single button. On the left-hand side, we have what looks like an eyelet for phone charm or lanyard, up and down volume control button, rocker. On the bottom, there's a little hole, which is the microphone, and a little cutout for removing the back cover, which we're going to use in a moment. On the right-hand side, there really is nothing to see. It's completely devoid of any controls or buttons or anything. On the top we have the power button, 3.5mm headphone connector and then a cover over the micro USB sync and charge connector. Keeps things neat. On the back we have a 3 megapixel autofocus camera but you'll notice that there's no LED flash or anything like that and uh, I guess there's a little shiny area around the outside that if you want to do self portraits you could probably achieve it but there's no dedicated self portrait mirror. Back cover it's fairly plasticky, pops off like so. Battery pops into this compartment here, uh, that way around. Micro SD card socket underneath too, where you can take the back cover off and actually access the micro SD card without removing the battery. And likewise, the SIM card actually pops in the side. That's fairly unusual. Generally, the SIM card is placed under the battery, so you have to remove the battery but not so in this case, although it's not recommended that you uh, stop putting the SIM card out while the phone's in use, but there we go. That cover pops back on then. 
like so and let's power up and while we wait for that to start let me run down the rest of the specification for you in terms of size 114 millimeters from top to bottom 55 millimeters wide and uh, just under 13 millimeters thick weighs just 109 grams and it does feel quite lightweight in the hand I think it's partly to do to the sort of styling and the design there shape um, so it does feel quite comfortable to hold and quite uh, quite lightweight in fact it's Google Android 2.1 which is uh, is good to see I see Froyo not making it down to these handsets just at the moment but I'm sure they soon will uh, CPU clock is at 667 megahertz 256 meg of RAM and 512 meg of ROM which isn't bad also and we do have a memory card supplied and I suspect if you're going to be a heavy user you're going to want to get a, a bit of a larger memory card rather than just a one gig you're probably going to want to get a sort of maybe a four or even an eight gig uh, memory card but it will support up to 16 gig micro SDHC memory card so that's pretty cool so 240 by 400 pixel display uh, is 3.2 inches it's not bad it's quad band for GSM, dual band for HSDPA so uh, it'll work pretty much wherever you take it throughout the world it's not bad at all it does have built in GPS and also USB 2.0 compliant USB connector on top Bluetooth 3 which is quite unusual wireless LAN supporting 802.11b and G and also N standards which is again quite unusual it's pretty good FM radio with RDS also so let's take a quick look at the user interface so swipe sweep glass to long unlock there we go so we have internet calendar camera and uh, POP3 IMAP email support set up there so if we push this button in the bottom left hand corner it brings up the full list of applications installed and there are some interesting things to see here already so we've got Monopoly demo, the Sims 3 demo, Uno demo and uh, Midnight Club demo, that's pretty cool Layers also on there, Google Mail which you would expect from an Android handset and it is a capacitive touchscreen by the way so it's extremely sensitive to controls Android Market as you can see there, POP3 IMAP email support, Think Office free right and go on YouTube client, also have settings, pop into settings, let's see what we have here and it has been a fairly nicely styled user interface, it's not quite the standard Android vanilla interface although it's not heavily overlaid as you would expect from um, say HTC with the Sense user interface this is a bit more subtle so anybody that doesn't like a heavy overlay might appreciate this if we go into about the phone we can see in here that it is Android 2.1 update 1 and it tells us that it is the GTI 5801 we come back out of here back to home screen and we can swipe across then we have the controls here and a couple of widgets installed telling us that uh, no messages on email and these are our wireless controls so we can turn GPS on off Wi-Fi on off, Bluetooth and so on and we can also change backlight brightness so it's set to full brightness and then we've got Google search with the voice search and that takes us through all of those we have a photo gallery widget and that's it so five panels or five pages uh, at the bottom we also have a button to go into messaging so we can compose new messages and in new messages we can see the QWERTY keyboard which is a standard looking Android style QWERTY I think we have an accelerometer should have an accelerometer there we go it took a second or two to actually rotate but then you have a larger QWERTY in the landscape orientation and we can turn back there's a bit of a lag in rotate but nothing terrible I'll go back out of here then we have the phone dialer pretty standard but there is a bit of an overlay here that Samsung have done so we've got rather than just uh, sort of standard black and white controls we actually do have coloured buttons and colour display which makes it a little bit more interesting being capacitive obviously dials quite easily and then we have the camera uh, but I don't have a memory card so I actually can't take any photos but essentially the camera looks to be pretty good but you need to use your memory card before you can actually store any photos which is a pretty pretty standard Android requirement you can swipe down at the top we can turn Wi-Fi on and off, Bluetooth on and off, turn it into silent and vibrate mode uh, clear any alerts that we've got I actually can see the notifications there and it's telling me that we don't have a micro or it doesn't have an external SD card installed which we already know about but it's good to have these controls here at the top which means that you don't have to use the ones here if you don't want to because it is just a repeat 
of the functionality of those in there, with the exception obviously of the pack light. So that's a very quick look at the Samsung Galaxy Apollo i 5801 I'll have a full review for you over the next couple of weeks. In the meantime, don't forget to follow us on Twitter, twitter.com slash tracyandmatt, and we'll be back soon with some more videos and reviews on tracyandmatt.co.uk. But for now, thanks for watching. Bitdefender is dedicated to protecting people's digital lives, so working with unboxings.com to help preview and review the latest technology is a perfect fit.